Because no one did this for you, you have to do it for yourself. You have to start distancing yourself from all things that are pleasurable, including your mom. She, she, you know how something is so sweet that it becomes, it becomes clighting, right? Like something so sweet that it's disgusting. That's what mommy love ultimately becomes when it's disordered in this way and it's poured on too thick for, for, for too long. So the safety, the security, the pleasure that mom once gave now is rotting you. It's Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, do you have any recommendations for someone trying to become a man who has over nurturing parents? I have a very successful father and too caring of a mother, but I'm getting older and my value as a man to society is low. They seem to be pretty content with me being a loser as long as I'm safe and sound, but I'm beginning to suffer from it. Uh, what recommendations do you have for an aging loser with a softy life? Bro, you know, as I'm reading your question, a lot of times just the answer pops right out of your mouth. And you said that they're pretty content with you being a loser and having a, as long as you're safe and sound. Well, you got to do the exact opposite of that. So you got to do something dangerous is ultimately what I'm telling you. Let's back up for a moment and talk a little bit about the situation that you're in. Um, when we talk in terms of a boy becoming a man and we think about, you know, uh, how it had traditionally been done prior to the gynocentric world that we live in, meaning that men were men and, and fathers were fathers and that there were, you, you know, there were strong elders in the society, they would recognize that there was a, there is a conspiracy against the boy that forms in the mother's spirit. It's a dark spirit. It's called a dark mother. There's a dark mother spirit within every mother. And you know that's true because even, you know, anthropo anthropologically, uh, it's evident. But much, many, many Disney movies come from, uh, like, old myths, you know, like uh, old tales, old stories. And there are certain archetypes in these Disney movies that are ever present. They're they're within the within the human psyche. And if you notice, a lot of them, a lot of them revolve around the dark mother. But it's usually the dark mother with the daughter, the dark mother in like say uh, Snow White, right? Or what's that one with Rapunzel, the dark mother? A lot of these movies they have the examples of this or Cinderella, right? It's always the stepmother. The stepmother is the dark mother, and it's the and it's this. Uh, this 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 desire to consume the boy right that's that's evident in the mother and when men were men and women were women and they understood their natures and they were they were uh there were boundaries against us falling into our lower natures either be it the dark mother or the dark father because they both do exist um there were rituals that were that were done in order to uh to avert these these sinful deep primal patterns that are present that cause chaos within the lives of children and society and one of them was the was a, a rites of a passage rites of passage initiation for young men and the first thing that they would have to do the very first step in rites of passage of initiation for young men was removal from the world of the mother there had to be a clean break and I use that word clean, I emphasize it because it, the clean break means that there needs to be a removal of all emotional content associated with mommy. Clean break with the mother means that there's no animosity towards mommy. There's no, there's no perverted loving feelings towards mommy. These boys, you know, a lot of you see, you see like a lot of professional athletes, pro basketball players and stuff. They grow up in the ghetto and, and their mom worked two jobs and they had no dad. But then they grow up. And they have a disordered loving uh, love uh, affair with their moms. And it's all about, I'm going to save you, mama. I'm going to be that man that you always needed, mama. I'm going to buy you a house, mama. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything for you, mama. And don't nobody say nothing about my mama. And their mama comes before their wife, comes before their children. And it's, it's, it's a disordered relationship to the mother. And if the mother's not aware, she can try to make that boy into her, her son husband. And you see a lot of these. And so there's this, there's this strange incestuous affair that happens between the mom and the, and the son. And a part of what the, the, the part of the way that the mother um, continues to smother the boy is by keeping him under her apron, right? Safe and sound, like you said, 
safety, security, sensuality, pleasure, comfort, ease. These are all from the mother. These are all words that are associated with material, matrix, matriarchy, mommy, right? They're all associated with the world of the mother. And so there needs to be a break, total break from not just the mother, but everything the mother represents. And the mother represents comfort. So what the, what the older men would do is that they would come and make that clean break with the mother by stripping him out of the home, right? And the women back then, because they understood, they knew better. And so women were women. Uh, the women would support this. They would say, okay, yeah, it's time for this boy to grow up. Otherwise, he's going to be useless. Like you said, I'm, I'm useless. Um, I have low value in society as a man. Well, they couldn't, they couldn't afford to have low value men when survival and safety was an, a real issue. Now you could live your whole life as a loser and you'd be just fine. So th there's no pressure. But they needed real men back then because they needed to protect themselves from warring tribes and they needed to hunt and shit like that. So it was like, okay, this boy, mom and dad knew, the woman and the older men and the older women knew, okay, he needs to get off my tit and he needs to be introduced and atoned to the world of the father. Now your father being a successful man in the worldly sense as it is today has a lot of implications, right? And I, I mean, I don't even want to, we go down that route, but I much rather focus on the mother right now in your situation because, because nothing can happen with regard to the father or the world of men, the world of pattern, the world of patriarchy. Uh, none of that can happen. All that is, is only available if this clean break from the mother happens. There is no father. There is no, there's no atonement with the father. There's no becoming a man if the clean break with the mother doesn't happen. And so you're 28 years old and you're still safe and sound. And what's required is that you have an initiation into austerity, challenge, and danger. And that danger could be literal danger, like our ancestor may have had, like, you know, make these boys fight a lion or something, fight a bear, or like, you know, they would they would do like these feats of strength, or they would have them jump off something really high into the water and swim, or they would like make them fight, right? I was watching this one video with these these boys in Africa, and like when a boy would come of age, they would bare knuckle fight, right? And that's how they prove themselves as a man. Or they would lift a stone, right? Like this is like what they did in, you know, Scotland and stuff. They would have the man stones. This boy, you know, he might he might break his bones, but he's going to lift that stone, right? So they do something challenging, something austere, and something dangerous. Austere means punishment, right? It means, uh, you know, like when they say austerity, you know, austere. Austere is like punishment. It's like, it's like mortification, doing stuff that's hard. Fasting is austere, right? It's hard. It's something that you impose upon yourself. And if you haven't fasted, I would say that's a good, it's, it's good for you to start fasting. Start fasting. Do some long fast. Just to, just to punish yourself. Just to, just to be austere. Just to, just to mortify the flesh and the pleasure. If you have video game console, break it. Smash that shit. Start, start, because no one did this for you, you have to do it for yourself. You have to start distancing yourself from all things that are pleasurable, including your mom. She, she you know how something is so sweet that it becomes, it becomes cliding, right? Like something so sweet that it's disgusting. That's what mommy love ultimately becomes when it's disordered in this way and it's poured on too thick for, for, for too long. So the safety, the security, the pleasure that mom once gave now is rotting you. It's rotting you. So all the things that she and he, you know, even your father, because he's probably, you know, he, he's colluding with her in this unconsciously that pr to create comfort for you in your life, you got to start rejecting, reject food, reject. Uh, if you're, you definitely, if you're watching porn or you're masturbating, you got to stop that right away. You got to stop. You got to suffer. You be a grown man at home and still uh, watching porn and beating off is just going to keep you weak. It's going to keep you soft. It's going to keep you addicted. It's going to keep you trapped in pleasure and it's going to keep you, uh, you know, attached to your mama. So fasting, um, uh, fasting, uh, semen retention, um, even, even like getting rid of technology. Like I said before, like if you got, if you're into video games, break that shit, break that shit. Stop listening to music. 
music is effeminate in a lot of ways. Not that I'm against music, but music feeds an emotional neediness that a lot of us who are empty or addicted use music as a drug, right? Get away from music, stop watching movies, make yourself like someone said here, a Spartan, right? Start living a Spartan lifestyle. Take your bedroom and get rid of everything in your bedroom and just have your bed. Just get rid of everything. Get rid of all your clothes, right? All your baby boy clothes, right? Get rid of all your fashionable clothes and start wearing the same shit every day, right? You got you punish yourself. Put yourself into your own military boot camp. Those are all little strategies, all little things that you could do. You could start, you could kind of slowly unfold. Or you can just rip the Band-Aid off, pick up and leave. If you got a car, well, then you're good. Leave. Leave your home. Leave your home. But where are you going to go? I don't know. But where are you going to live? I don't know. How are you going to do it? I don't know. I do know you could park your car in, in, in the parking lot at, at uh, Walmart and sleep in it. Right? Go do something dangerous. Go do something that's so wild that, that your life will be on the line, threatened, right? Most of, it's figment, most of it is in our imagination, but it's going to seem like you'll lose your life, right? Go throw yourself into a, you know, go to move to a brand new city somewhere. Check into a, to a homeless shelter. Get food at the at the soup kitchen and then open up the, the, the book, the newspaper and look for a shitty job. Look for a job that you have to suffer, right? Don't mean this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life, but it's your initiation. Go dig ditches, go pick fruit, go do something dirty, go clean the street, take a bad job that pays you just enough so that maybe you can rent a room and pay a weekly rate, $50 a week or something, and just enough so that you could buy a little bit of food and start living a Spartan lifestyle. You don't have to live this way your whole life, but you gotta break yourself away from your mommy addiction. And it's gonna work, it, let me tell you something, the, where you are is extreme. You're in an extreme, unsafe situation. What you're doing right now and the way you're living is extreme and it's unsafe because your soul is at stake. You're slowly dying on the inside. It's not safe and it's extreme because in my opinion, you need to, at, at your age, you have to be providing some kind of value and, and, and you calling yourself a loser and you know, your parents, because by the mere virtue of your parents focused on your safety and security, safe and sound, right? And you say you're beginning to suffer from it, means you need to do just the exact opposite of it. You need to do something dangerous and unsound. The, everything I'm telling you right now is dangerous and unsound. You have to do the exact opposite, right? Some people are gonna listen to this thing and think that I'm, you know, I'm giving you, oh, Elliot's crazy, I can't believe he's giving this kid that advice. Yo, fuck you, those people are soft. People are soft, man. Most of the time we're taking, adv taking advice from other people who are, who are soft losers too. I'm telling you do something extreme in the opposite direction because it, it is the difference between living as a man or dying in your soul. You're going to be all right. I want you to understand that. There's so many damn safety nets in our world that you really can't suffer. Even if you decide to live on the streets, you're going to be safe. You'll be safe on the streets in most cities. Maybe sometimes safer than in your own home. Definitely safer than your own, than in your own home. We have the dark mother looming and stealing your soul. So go go to another city, live in a shelter, sent, in a shelter, live off of meager food or fast for days, suffer. Right? You say you're beginning to suffer from sweetness. That's what you're beginning to suffer from. You're suffering from the sweetness. Too much, mommy. Go and like really suffer. Right. So that then when they see you afterwards, they can't even recognize you. Damn, you look like you lost 80 pounds. Damn, he has that strong look in his eye. They're going to think you got a crazy look in your eye, but you're going to have a you're going to have a firm look in your eye. This is what happens to these boys that go off to boot camp. A lot of times you're 28. I don't know if you're too old. Maybe go into the military. 
Just go into the military. Screw it. Just go into the military. Join the army. Right? Don't think about it. Don't overthink it. That's the other problem. Don't overthink about it. Don't over-rationalize it. Don't over-mull uh, over it because that's a part of the effeminate nature from the mommy brain. You got to break the mommy brain. Yeah, going into the military is dangerous. It's dangerous. And there's a lot of things about it you might not like, right? Like they're probably going to shoot you with all kinds of vaccines or whatever. Doesn't matter. Suffer. Suffer in a different way. Sacrifice yourself in a different way. Let them shave your head and, and shout in your face. This is what's needed. This is what's needed for 90% of the boys living in our world right now. Because I know y'all are suffering. So that's it, man. Get rid of all pleasure first. Do those first things I said. Cut, that, cut the porn out. Cut the video games out. Cut out sweet food, good food. Cut out sleeping late. Cut out all that comfort. And then start looking for ways that you could throw yourself off the cliff so that you can start learning how to fly on your way down. That's what it was required. Don't look for a well-defined path. Don't do it because that's the, mom, that's the mommy brain coming up again. Don't look for uh, clarity or assurance about the path you take. Don't, there's no assurance. The more unsure it is, the better. The more austere it is, meaning like you're going to suffer, the better. And just take that, man. Take that route. And it's up to you. You're, you're, you're not a child, right? Even, even my boys when they're 24, like I still kind of, I, I babied them a little bit. I talked to them a little bit differently. But by 28, bro, by 28, I had two kids. I was married for four years. And I was already, I had built my business. Not built it, but I was building it. Strength camp. Right? And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that so that you know what's available to you when you nut up at your age so you got to do this bro you got to do this it's, it's sink or swim for you and you don't have much much time to think this one through because you're going to be 30 in two years you don't have much time so that's it man leave your parents and don't call them don't call them for a year yep so that's it man hope that helps dude <laughs> done Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. And me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.